Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me, James. Hope you guys are all doing well. And we continue with the Explorer Note read-through for Scorch Chef. Today we're going to begin the story of John DeCaea, a character from the Wild West, Texas and Arizona territories. And his story shares the same timeline as Raya. So if you haven't seen the episodes on the Explorer Notes from Raya, go and check them ones out. But today we begin the story of John DeCaea. Before we jump into this, I just want to say thank you very much to everybody who's left some kind words on all of the note read-through that we've done so far. I know it has been requested for quite a while since I did Series 1, so thank you for everybody who's showing the support on the videos as they're going up. And I'm sure we'll continue them into Aberration and Extinction, as we of course continue with the gameplay. But let's just jump into this, so notes 1 to 15 from John DeCaea. Old habits die hard. I suppose I'm living proof. I woke up stark naked who knows where with who knows what lodged in my arm. But just weeks later, I'm already back to robbing folks at gunpoint. This place may not be Texas or the Arizona Territory, but I'm the same John DeCaea. I don't know why that makes me restless. I didn't mind this life before, but then I didn't exactly choose it. I just stumbled into it. Or at least that's what I tell myself. So much for that. Maybe this is just who I am. Sometimes the pennies a man won't part with willingly are worth less than the words he'll ever share with any stranger. Some of my new partners don't see that. Blondie's particularly blind to it. He's always looking for an excuse to pull the trigger. And he's stubborn as hell. He even still gets mad when we all call him Blondie. As if any of us can pronounce that name of his. But if Blondie were calling the shots, that hunter wouldn't have told us about the group gathering in the southeast. And they'll have a lot more for the taking than animal hides. I can't believe how easy this was. There weren't many guards here to begin with, and the few they've got are more likely to shoot you a smile than a bullet. We just walked right in. The settlement is even bigger than we expected. It's impressive. Protection aside, everyone's working together to build their own little paradise. Not that it'll last. If you ask them, they'll credit their leader. A woman called Raya. The others have spread out to find where the supplies are stored. But I'm feeling curious. Maybe I'll go and find this mystery woman. Might be interesting. I don't know what brought me to this desert. Back home they would probably say it was the spirits of our ancestors. Other folks might say God, whatever it was. After talking to that woman, I realise now that I've been wasting what is given to me. I have no history here. There are no posters showing off my sneering face. No posses hunting me. I could be any man I choose. So today, I'm making a choice. The folks here don't deserve to be robbed. What they deserve is protection, and I'm the man to protect them. Hell, maybe they'll even call me Sheriff. Blondie didn't approve of my decision. I've never been very good at persuasion, so I let my pistol make the case. The others saw it my way after that. Convincing Raya was a lot less trouble. She knew the settlement's guards weren't exactly the cream of the crop, and that if I wanted trouble, I'd have already made it. When Raya talks, people listen. I can tell that much from watching her. But in a lawless place like this, words aren't enough. It didn't take long for us to come to terms. Well, I suppose I'd better inspect the troops. Maybe a few of them can shoot. Now I know how the old man felt while he was teaching me how to hunt. We stopped seeing eye to eye even before I left the tribe. But I will always thank him for the time he spent telling me the same damn things over and over again. Must have drove him wild inside, but he never showed it. Hasn't been easy to imitate that patience. Half of this sorry bunch is green as grass, and the half that isn't would rather hold a spear than a gun. At least they're improving, even if it is at the speed of molasses. Her Highness stops by on occasion, but thankfully it's just for a gander. This be even harder with distractions. My patchwork posse had their first real test today. Some of our gatherers ran into those big lizards a few miles west of the village and one of them managed to come call for help. Luckily the others had tucked themselves away in an outcropping and we got everyone back safe and sound. Well, except for the Frenchman. He forgot that when you shoot at those big bastards they'll shoot right back. It took them hours to get those barbs out of his arm. When we got back, I think I heard the words thank you more than any other day of my life. I don't really know what to say in return. The townsfolk may be grateful for my protection, but that doesn't mean they like me. I don't mind. If they're looking for social graces, they ought to find Her Highness. Rhea hates that nickname. 
She thinks I'm calling her stuck up. And I suppose I am, just a little. Can't imagine that woman's hands ever saw Callus before she got here. That's not the whole of it though. Take this business with that tower. She's got folks from all sorts of places praying to the damn thing. And she never really asked them to. They just want to follow her lead. It's like she's wearing an invisible crown. Can't decide whether that's comforting or concerning. My band of misfit lawmen may finally be coming together. It's been a whole week since someone shot themselves in the leg or pissed their britches over a raptor. Maybe I'll finally be able to get some decent shut eye. Probably too much to hope for. Every day, Nosti grows a little bigger and I have a few more problems to solve. These giant bugs from the other day, for example, found two of them playing around with a pickaxe a few miles north of the river. I've never heard of any animals using tools. Not outside of the legends the elders used to tell about Big Owl and Coyote. Doesn't seem natural. Something damaged a water pipe outside of town yesterday, and when a crew went to repair it, they were attacked by a whole mass of mantises. My boys and I drove them off, but we were too late to save the engineers. I know it sounds crazy, but I think those mantises cut through that pipe on purpose, to draw us out. If I'm right, then I'm more concerned about them than anything. In the stories about Big Owl and Coyote, Big Owl was the huge, scary one, but Coyote was more dangerous because he was clever. He'd trick man and monster alike, and everyone feared him. I never believed those stories, but I sure remember the lesson. I was worried that Raya would fight some of the new precautions my boys have been taking, but I guess I've earned a looser leash. I suppose I ought to lay off on the highness talk then. Seems only fair. The other day we even shot the breeze a little. First time we talked about something besides what needs doing. Seems we're both a little worn out. Unlike me, she's used to being respectable and responsible. But being in charge means everyone wants your time and attention. This place hasn't been easy on either of us or anyone else. But I am still kicking so far. Come what may, I don't plan on stopping. Something like this was bound to happen one day. The bigger the town gets, the more value Raya has to it. And what happens to valuable things? People try to steal them. It wasn't a bad idea, holding her for ransom like that. Too bad for those raiders this is my town. I picked most of them off with a rifle as they tried to force her onto a pack animal. And my men finished off the few others as they fled. One tried surrendering, but I had to send a message. If you pull a stunt like that in my goddamn town, you won't get any mercy. Not a single shred of it. That woman's got some nerve. I save her hide and the next day Raya's scolding me for putting down a defenceless kidnapper. Hardly even thanked me first. What did she expect me to do? Give him free room and board for the rest of his days? Let him go so he can tell every bandit in the desert how soft we are? I told her that if she didn't like the way I protect her then she can protect herself. Should have kept my damn mouth shut. Now I'm stuck teaching her how to shoot three times a week. Gonna be at it forever too. She couldn't hit a bison's ass from five paces. I do believe that my pupil is the first dead-eye Egyptian priestess the world has ever seen. It took a few months, but Raya's too stubborn to quit. I shouldn't have been so hard on her. Trying to keep your faith and traditions in a dog-eat-dog world isn't easy. Hell, I couldn't even do it myself. And that's before giant lizards were looking to take a bite out of my backside. During one lesson, she told me this story of how her goddess had a nice side and a nasty one. I think she meant something else, but the way I see it, we're the goddess. She's nice, I'm nasty, and we keep each other in check. Even after all this time in Nosti, I have trouble sleeping in the same bed every night. Sometimes I'll just toss and turn until I give up and go to sleep beneath the stars. Hell, I'm not even sure we ever slept in the same spot twice back in the Russo gang. Thought I'd live that way forever, wild and free like Doc Russo. Probably die guns blazing like him too. Sounded better to me than withering away with the rest of my tribe as the world passed us by. I don't think Doc would recognise me now. I'm not the Apache nephew he taught to read and shoot. Matter of fact, if he were here, I'd probably have to shoot him. And that concludes part one of the notes from John Decaya and Scorched Earth. Don't forget to check in with me this time tomorrow for the next episode of John Decaya's Notes if you're watching these ones as they come out. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for more ARK survival content from myself. But until this time tomorrow, I'm James from Complete Games. 
and I'll see you.